All right, so in this lecture, you're gonna deepen your understanding of Ajax calls via jQuery, and more specifically, again, calling JSON data from a foreign server. Now, in this case, we're gonna use the Pokey API to get information about Pokemon. Now, if you're not a fan of Pokemon, you can also use the Star Wars API, which works just the same way. You just have to adjust the URL a little bit and then follow the same process that you learned in the previous lecture to just look at the data you get. And then you can see in the object which data you have available and you can just do something with it. But I prefer Pokemon, so I'm gonna use the Pokey API and I'm gonna put a link to both these sites into the lecture resources. So you can just click there and you're gonna get taken right to the page you want. Now you can already see part of the URL here, which is http pokeapi.co slash api slash v2 for version two. And then for example, you could go ahead and append Pokemon slash one here. And that's then gonna give you Bulbasaur, the first Pokemon in the series. And the Star Wars API works just the same way. So for example, when you go here and let's say you want people slash one, you get Luke Skywalker or with yeah with Luke Skywalker or with planet slash three, you get Yavin four and so on. So you can just take a look at which URLs are available and to see all of them, you can also check out the documentation. Same thing goes for the Poke API. You can also check out the documentation here or here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this base URL here and then jump right into the editor. Now for the purposes of this lecture, the URL I'm gonna use is gonna be, let's say Poke API URL. I'm gonna use this base URL and then I'm gonna append generation slash one, which is gonna give me all the Pokemon species from the first generation. So that will be 151 Pokemon in this case. And now again, I'm gonna use the getJSON function. So we're gonna call $.getJSON. So you can already see that JSON is a very common format in which you're gonna retrieve your data. All the APIs usually provide the ability to give you your data in the JSON format. And now again, I'm gonna put in the URL here, which is gonna be the Poke API URL. And then again, you would have the chance to put in some options here but actually that's not even necessary. So you can go right ahead and say done and specify the event handler for when the call has been finished. And again, that's gonna retrieve the data that was fetched from the server. So again, I'm gonna follow the same procedure. I'm gonna look at the data I get by logging that to the console. And then I can take a look in the browser to see what this actually does. So let's open up the developer console here and then take a look at this object we get. So you can see here, we have name generation one, we have Pokemon species, which is an array of 151 Pokemon species. This is not really the Pokemon array, it's Pokemon species. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that, but it's not the usual order in which you have your first 151 Pokemon. So the order is a bit different, but you still get all the 151 Pokemon from the first generation. So this is the object or the property that I'm interested in. So let's take a look at what we have in there. So we have 151 objects with a name. In this case, the first one is Bulbasaur again, and a URL to get more information about that species. So for this lecture, I'm only gonna use the name here. And then in the next lecture, I'm also going to extend this by using the URL that we get here to extend our little app and to provide more information about each Pokemon. So in the next lecture, we're going to have to do another call, another get request in JSON format to retrieve more information from this URL that we actually get from the first request. But for this lecture, I'm going to keep it a bit more simple and only use the name for now. So let's go back into the editor. So first of all, I'm gonna iterate through the Pokemon species array by using $.each again, and then I'm gonna pass in which object or array in this case I wanna iterate over. 
which was called data.pokemonSpecies. And then I'm going to define the function which is going to iterate over each of those. So that gets the index again and then the actual Pokemon or Pokemon species to be exact. And then I'm going to save the name for each of those. So I'm going to say Pokemon.name. But I actually want to capitalize the first letter in the name because they're all lowercase in the data we get. So let's say char at zero dot to uppercase. And that's going to capitalize the first letter in the name. And then I'm going to append the rest of the name by using pokemon.name.slice1, which is going to give me the rest of the string without the first letter. So this will now give me the name with a capital first letter. And now let me go ahead and add a new div to the index.html file here in which to put all the contents. So let's just rename this from Flickr to Pokemon. And then I can use that in here. So I'm going to say in each iteration, I'm going to create a new paragraph tag by calling dollar and putting in a paragraph tag here. So that's going to create a paragraph element. And then I'm going to set the HTML of that paragraph to, let's say, Pokemon species number index is name. Or actually, I have to go with index plus one because I don't want to print that to the page with a zero index, but I want to start at one. And then I'm going to append this paragraph to our Pokemon div. I'm just going to put in Pokemon here. So this will now, for each of those 151 Pokemon species, it's going to get the name and capitalize the first letter. Then it's going to create a new paragraph tag, which will print the name of that Pokemon species, and it's going to add that to the page. So let's now take a look at this. All right, so you can now see we have Pokemon species number one is Bulbasaur, then Charmander, Squirtle, and so on. So you can see the evolutions are not shown here. They're shown somewhere further down the page. Like for example, here you have Charizard. So they're not in the usual order you would expect. But of course you can try around and get to know Ajax a little better as well by looking at the documentation and see how you can fetch the data about a specific Pokemon. Let's actually go ahead and also add an event handler again for the fail event. So if the request doesn't succeed, you can then again call fail here and pass in a function or an event handler, which will execute if the request was not successful. So you could lock that to the console to be able to debug that and see that your request actually failed. So let's say request to poke API failed. And by the way, you can also add an event handler that's going to be executed in either case. So whether the request was successful or not, and you can do that by calling a function which is called always. So done will be executed if the request was successful, fail will be executed if it was not successful, and always will be executed in either case. So in here, I'm just gonna log Pokemon is awesome. And you could of course print something else. Now this will be executed in every case. So let's take a look now at the browser and you can see that it will now print this even though it also performs whatever action I defined in the done block. So if the request was successful, like it was in this case. Now, in some cases, you may find that your call is not successful for some reason, even though you haven't actually changed anything. And that might be because the Poke API server is not currently reachable. So it's a free project and there's not a lot of budget for it. So sometimes the server may be down or overloaded, but still it's a good way to try out Ajax with jQuery by just calling the API because it's completely free and public. You don't need any API key or something like that. All right, so that's all I wanna cover in this lecture. And in the next lecture, we're gonna extend this by also using the URL that is given in the data that we get 
so that you can click on one of the Pokemon here and then it's gonna display more info about that particular Pokemon. So I hope you had fun coding along in this lecture and that you've also deepened your understanding of how to perform JSON requests from jQuery. So thank you again for watching this lecture and I will see you again in the next one.